Hello. This year's theme of unearthed is vitally integral to the artist's creative process. What does it mean to be an artist? Somebody who makes art? Most, I think, would agree that an artist expresses what it means to be human in their time and their place. We were just talking about our sign language uh, interpreters here, and I've been fascinated watching them, not just because of the skill, but because the amount, uh, the number of symbols that are used uh, in the gestures there, and a lot of what we're going to talk about today is symbolism. Artists in creating are expressing what it means to be human. And that requires self-reflection. It requires digging deep to reconcile the human spirit against the human animal. And this endeavor to understand human spirit, to rise above, has been going on since humans have been on this planet. I would like to take you on a little journey to show you what it means when artists earth and unearth. Almost 7,000 years ago, the Egyptians built the pyramids. They have defied time and explanation. They are a really amazing example of earthing and unearthing. In the mid-1900s, somebody was looking at an overhead picture of the, the Great Pyramids at Giza, and they noticed that the third pyramid, the small one, was actually off the axis of, created by the other two. And then somebody made the connection that Orion's belt was exactly in that dimension and proportion directly above the pyramids. It turns out, astonishingly, that the Egyptians were using the River Nile as the Milky Way galaxy to chart the, the stars on the planet using pyramids. They were literally bringing heaven to earth. And in so doing, they created these inspirational structures, inspirational structures reaching for the stars to reach beyond their human existence and unearth the human spirit. This is not something that just the Egyptians were doing. At relatively the same time, in Vedic scriptures, the Hindus and Buddhists were talking about how the human being, the human body, is the pyramid, is the temple. And the chakras, the chakras, were levels of consciousness that one would traverse through to reach God consciousness at the crown chakra. And that crown chakra is represented anatomically in the dome of the skull. Here was the pinnacle of what it meant to be human, to achieve complete detachment of the human spirit from the human animal, to rise to one's potential. And it's no coincidence that architects across culture, across geography, across history, have used that dome shape in their spiritual structures, like this synagogue in Germany or this Christian church in Jordan, or this Muslim mosque in Iran. The dome represents what, is, what you are able as a human being to be. It unearths you from earth. And if you were to stand in the center of the dome and look directly up, you would see a circle our first symbol for the day. The circle has come to mean in many cultures the eternal. It is endless, it has no beginning, it has no end. It is the spirit. I'd like you to remember that. We're gonna come back to it. But while we're talking about bringing heaven to earth, in the Quran, there is a, a parable 
a metaphor for paradise, which says that paradise is four gardens fed by four rivers of water, milk, honey, wine. The philosophy behind this particular metaphor is expansive and well beyond what we can talk about today. But I would like to show you that architects in the Islamic context have been literally creating heaven on earth by building these four gardens with four rivers and a fountain in between. And this is called in Farsi the Chahar Bagh, the four gardens. And I'm sure you've seen it, but maybe not recognized it. For example, at the Taj Mahal. Can anybody see the four gardens? And the four rivers and the fountain in between. Heaven on earth. And if one were to sit in heaven on earth, it should facilitate the unearthing of the human spirit. Another example across the, across the world in Spain at the Alhambra is a version of the Chahar Bagh with rock gardens, the four rivers, and the fountain in between. We have an example here in Toronto as well at the Aga Khan Park, a, a modern take with four rock pools and then the fountain in between. And I'd like to give you one more example in on a rooftop in London, United Kingdom. But the reason I'm bringing this one up is to introduce you to our major symbol, which is this fountain here, and it's octagonal. In the Islamic context in particular, the octagon is the human experience. Let me show you how. Remember we had the Chahar Bagh. The Chahar Bagh is square. And in the Islamic context, in the art of the Islamic world, this represents earth, the earthly plane. It is defined, it has a beginning and an end, it is well circumscribed. It is the flesh, the human animal. Now if I take that square and I superimpose the spirit, the circle, the tangential relation between the two is the octagon. The octagon represents the endeavor across culture, across history, across time of human beings to come to terms with who they are, who we are, as spirits, as material beings. And artists sim are symbolized in this, in this diagram, in this simple structure, the simple geometric structure, as an expression of that human experience. Our band Late Night Conversations, we believe that we are an octagon. Our music is an octagon. We channel, tap into something deep within us and bring it forth to you in sonic form. And by sharing it, we hope that maybe it will unearth in you your spirit. Thank you very much.